Spider-Man No Way Home, the brand new MCU film where the multiverse explodes with its amazing, spectacular, ultimate, superior storytelling potential. And the weird thing about this movie is, like, first things first, it is the first movie event that we have got given since The Wise of Skywalker. And that was two years ago. That came out, like, this time last, uh, in 20, 2019. I was going to say last year, but it's 2019. Plus, with all of the rumors and speculations with this character showing up, and this character showing up, or this character is going to show up, or this is going to happen, and this is going to happen. What you want to do with a movie is to leave your expectations at the door and take the film by its own merits, right? But you feel like this is a movie where you're like, I can't, because the internet's like, this character's going to show up. And you're like, wait, wait, this character's going to show up? And you have to kind of pull you back in. But... After seeing the movie, what I will say is this, because I'm going to talk about certain spoiler things at the end, but what I will say non-spoilerly is that this might be the best Spider-Man movie ever made. And now, here's the thing. People may say, look, you're 25, uh, the original Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire came out in 2002, you were 5 when that came out, and you watched every single Spider-Man movie in theatre when it came out since then. You're just saying this because of the fan service and of the nostalgia of the villains. No, that is not the reason. It's cool. It's cool to see William Foe back as Green Goblin. It's cool to see Alfred Alina back as Doc Ock. It's cool seeing the lizard. It's cool to see Sandman. It's cool to see Sandman, not cool to see Electro. They do approve on Electro a little bit. They do approve Electro a little bit. But it's because of the emotion of the story. Every moment, even the fan service moments of the movie, or elements of the movie, is all driven by drama, by emotion by Peter's uh, learning of responsibility. The responsibility is kind of like the theme of the movie without hitting spoilers. Like that is like the key Spider-Man thing about with great power comes also great responsibility. That is a thing. But if you think about this Spider-Man never really has l take that concept of responsibility onto himself and this is the movie where he does that and because the events that happen in the movie it, it just drives everything forward with everything like you feel every emotion that happens in it every second like yes the story is about you know in Far From Home the last Spider-Man movie people have found out that Peter Parker is Spider-Man plus they think he is a murderer. And it's not just mucking up Peter's life. It's mucking the people around him. You know, it's messing up uh, MJ's life. And Aunt May's life. And Happy's life. And uh, Ned's life. So he goes to Dr. Swains and says, Hey, can you make a spell where everyone forgets that I'm Spider-Man? But that spell goes wrong. And because of it, the multiverse is open. And the multiverse opens up all a good chunk like at least like five villains from the previous two versions of Spider-Man. You got Green Goblin and Sandman and Dr. Octopus from the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man films and you got Lizard and Electro from the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man films and Peter is on this quest to fix his wrongs, fix, have a responsibility of what he's doing and what you have is Tom Holland's best performance as the character. Uh, tears were shed in the theaters. Uh, oranges were cheering and whirring. The ending was surprising. And here's the thing, I thought the ending was surprising, but smart. It was the type of ending I felt like, okay, Sony, Marvel, Disney, you don't know if this partnership between Spider-Man is going to be a thing. You don't know if you're going to stand the deal. So you kind of do that ending where it's like, okay, if the partnership ends, 
you can still continue. If the partnership continues, you can still continue it. It's a nice, have your kinky ear, and whatever the situation falls, you can still continue this version of the character, and that's really well put together. The improvements of the villains are really well put together. The highlight is William Afoe as Green Goblin. He is a better character than he was in the Universal Spider-Man movie, because let's be honest, that version a Green Goblin that we got in the original Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire is a Saturday morning cartoon. Like his motivation ends the first time he shows up. His motivation ends and now he's just like, I'm man, I want to kill! That's, he's a Saturday morning cartoon. While in this he has motivation and he's more, he's more of a threat and he's brutal. And I mean that's the thing about Sam Raimi's Spider-Man films who directed the Tobey Maguire films. The villains were brutal, and they throw no punches in this. They remind you how violent those those villains were, and it's really it's a really well put together movie. It's bloody brilliant. Is it better than Into the Spider Verse because it's also a multiverse movie doing with Spider Man? Hell yeah, it's the best Spider Man movie ever. Once again, not because of the fan service. Because of the story, how it's all handled, the emotions, the characters, this story is all character driven. Nothing happens in this movie that isn't Peter Parker's story driven motivation push. And it's really well put together. Now, I'm going to talk about spoilers. But not in like a whole thing of like this character dies or if this, this character does this or this character does that. But more aligns like if they were in the trailers type situation. So if you don't want to hear my thoughts of how I felt they handle X, come back, watch the film, and come back and hear my thoughts, okay? Okay, in five, four, three, two, and if you don't want to hear this specific thing, and that is Tommy Aguirre and Andrew Garfield are in the movie. We do have the day of the spider, you may say, moment. We have the 10th Doctor meeting the 11th Doctor, meeting the War Doctor. We have a Doctor Who moment with Spider-Man. And it, it was wonderful. And those were the two moments where my theatre, even myself, was like, like clapping. You know, when Andrew Garfield showed up and appeared, they clapped. And definitely when Toby Wright showed up, it was a heavier heavily eclectic because you know it's like seeing you know i know this this guy you know i know this actor has died for like what 20 years or so but it fit you know with it's kind of like if chris Reeve showed up in a superman movie of course it's gonna be like the oh my god moments it's like oh my god it's the, we're seeing them on screen again and the thing is once again it's like charlie cox these actors have not step a beat definitely Tobey Maguire. And he has a th because what is it, it's like 14 years since Spider-Man 3? I knew, I, you know, I know about Spider-Man 4, the cancel Spider-Man 4, but it's been 14 years since Spider-Man 3. And he hasn't lost a beat. It's been, uh, what, about, what, 8 years since the Amazing Spider-Man 2? And Andrew, Garf Andrew Garfield hasn't Spop a beat. He hasn't step a beat. It just feels like, you know what it feels like? It feels like, it feels like the Arrowverse. It feels like the, the separate films of these separate Spider-Mans were running around at the same time as this version, as the Tom Holland version of the character. And it feels like we're finally ha we're having the Arrowverse crossover with the Spider-Man. That's what it feels like. It feels that it, and it just felt watching them on screen and watching them talk and having conversations. I don't want to die on, on the conversation and feel the emotion and how they connect. And, and I mean, yes, it's fan service, but it's fan service how it should be done. It's not the huh. Was ah? Uh, there's a couple of lines like that, but the. Not the, huh? It's the, look, there's a story purpose there. And it's beautifully done. It's beautifully, beautifully done. You know, there's jokes, there's dynamic. 
the, the chemistry between the three characters, the three characters of the same, who are different but are the same, you know, all that. Um, it's a really well, the action's fantastic. Um, it's just, and the cool thing about, I'll, I'll end it off here. I know this is long, but it is, you know, it's no way home. There's a lot of stuff to talk about. The thing about this film, if you really think about it, is that there's going to be, going to be people who, whose first exposure to these versions, this spy, the, you know, the first time they're meeting this version of Green Goblin, or the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, or the Anthony Garfield Spider-Man, or the Electro Spider-Man. I mean, the Electro Spider-Man, the first time Electro, or Doc Ock, or Sandman. It's the first time they're meeting these guys, and if they like them, they'll...